All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's episode 108, Marvel Space Hype. And it's an important day because Spider Man's in theaters. Did you go? But is it in theaters, though, Nathan? Is it no, in theaters? No, it's not. I, my, none of my theaters have it. I, I, I looked on. Uh, I didn't know it was coming out today. I forgot. Um, even though we talked about it last week or two weeks ago, whatever. Um, and uh, I see some tweets about it. I'm like, oh, wait, it is coming out today. Let me check my local listings. I'm not going to be able to see it because I'm exhausted because it's a fucking Monday. Anyways, sure. uh, there's like Cinemark in Florence, in Kentucky, Kentucky, which is like 15 miles away, 15 minutes away. Um, I could have drove there, but it's like it was. I have to go over into another state to go watch it. Uh, let me let me show you because uh, I – it wasn't even on like the Fandango front page. I have to like look it up uh, on my front page for Fandango. So in Cincinnati, Ohio, Spider Man two thousand. There's one in Florence near me, and there's one near Kings Island, which is seventeen miles away. Ten miles away, then seventeen miles away, um, and the other one's forty six miles away, which is basically in a different city. I mean, th this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Nothing in Cincinnati, out of all like five or six, seven, eight, ten theaters in Cincinnati. No, 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 nothing is getting shown here. Why? 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 It makes no sense. I hate my, it. My uh, my hopes were boosted because they actually did end up expanding a few days to the movies. Mine just says the fourteenth or the fifteenth. Yeah, I mean they they expanded at least like a, a few days. I like I think like from one day to at least four days. I saw, um, not which really is cool, cool, but like they're not here. I guess my Cinemark does have it. I pay for a ticket. I'm paying for A list for it's not gonna be an AMC. I'm <laughs> paying for A list. A list is only like 20 bucks. Yeah, right. monthly. Yeah. Yeah, that's cheap. So buy uh, another ticket. That's like then that'd be 30 bucks a month if you buy a Cinemark ticket. Right? You don't have you don't have ten dollars to scrap together. How much how much your tickets cost in Florida? Uh, I don't know. It depends, uh, I guess, on the format. That's true. And the, ours, and, the, and the day and the time of day. and Yeah. <clears throat> ours is usually like... Uh, I always go to Cinemark, and it's usually like 9.50, something like that, 9.45, um, mm -hmm. ma matinee, and then at night, it, it jumps up to 12 bucks. But you see XD is like 15. Um, IMAX is usually like 15... Dolby's usually 15 bucks, 17 bucks, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, I always want to consider getting A list. Like, maybe, maybe if I grow up and I like live by myself, I, I can just, I grow up, I know. But if I, if I like live myself or whatever, I could like A list could be much more opportune. But Cinemark is like five minutes away from me and it's such an easier drive than going an extra 10 to 15 miles to go to my AMC. Because if AMC was the one that was like five miles or five minutes away from me, I would definitely have a list. Um, but it's all about yeah. convenience, baby. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my life. Um, so yeah, we're back with the bad batch. Bad batch. Did you watch all these today, Nathan, motherfucker? Hey. Hey. What? Why? I'm just hey. saying. He totally did. <laughs> you don't know me. I do. I know you from know 300, when I watch them. 300 plus podcast episodes. It has been. <laughs> or it might be. Yeah, 400. Yeah. Where really? like our commentaries have gone. Our commentaries have hit over 120, maybe 140. I have to recheck the. That's uh, crazy. <laughs> that is. And now you want to add 18 more in the span of th three months. <laughs> Let's go. Joyce Slade and I were watching X Men. No, yeah, this go. week, right? This week we're starting X Men two thousand. Yeah. Well, whenever, whenever I say X Men two thousand, I instantly think of like Pokemon two thousand ninety seven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, is there a Pokemon ninety seven movie? No, like I was first thinking X Men ninety seven. Oh, oh, wow, yeah, true. Um. Anyways, uh, so yeah, let's jump right into it because it is ten o'clock. Um, so yeah, oops. If, if you have any questions uh, or concerns, 
questions about the episode or anything like that. These, these were, or at least last week was like very two very uh, impactful episodes setting up the trajectory for the second half of the season here. Um, and then, uh, and then last week's episode was also pretty pretty solid as well. Very just short, sweet, intense episode. Also setting up uh, pivotal points for the season. Um, it's April what 15th right now. The finale is May 4th. It's getting crazy. L- literally, we'll have one more Bad Batch review episode before the finale. I think because I was like kind of worried. I was like, we're lining up between my cup of tea and hyperspace hype. We're going back and forth every week. How is it going to look like heading towards this finale? But I like that we're going to be having our hyperspace hype episode the week of the 24th, 25th. So we can actually have some theories heading into the finale episode. And this one's pretty unique because it's just one episode on May 2nd um, mm. or May, May 1st. It's that Wednesday of my birthday, um, which mm. which works out. Um, so, yeah, that, that's going to be fun. So it, it's usually I wonder if the finale is going to be longer than 23 minutes. Because um, usually they, I think usually they spend. They split them up into like uh, like double episodes for the finale. I think they usually do that, but this one, this time, the final episode is just one final episode. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be longer yeah. or not. I think the very first episode of the Bad Batch. Let me see on Disney it's, Plus. It's a long one. It's a long one, right? So I, I wouldn't put it past yeah. them to just do a longer episode instead of just splitting it. Just make it like a. I don't know, like forty-five minute finale, um, animated. I think I think that's very possible um, for them. Okay, let me see. Bad Batch episode one was yeah, an hour and fifteen minutes for episode one. So we could be getting that for the season finale. I'm not expecting. That's kind of like too high of a hopes there, but don't, you never don't give me hope. <laughs> you never really know. It's my MC of the day. That we got in early. Got it in early and got it out of your system. Um, Cause yeah, everything else has just been split up between 23 to 28 minutes for, for these episodes. Um, mm. But yeah, here we go. Episode 10, which was called wait for it. They pull up my notes. I, I took some good notes today. Um, once again, identity thank, crisis. thank you to star Wars explained. Yeah. Identity crisis. Thank you. Yeah. Identity crisis was amazing. Um, first off, Nathan, what do you think of the episode? Identity Crisis, episode 10, season three. When you spend time with family whom are also children, you get a new perspective on these situations. So when I see children in distress because of the Empire, it just unsettles me even more. And just makes me feel even sadder. (laughs) Um, It's just just a bummer. (laughs) I agree, man. This was a bummer episode. It it felt very much in line with the tone of the very first episode of the season. Which was we had like Omega's depression stage. Where she was just, you know, trying to retain that will and that hope. But she was in such a hopeless situation. Um, you know, in in Tantus, and now, well, first off, the title of the episode "Identity Crisis." I immediately thought, like, okay, are we getting some crosshair identity crisis? I didn't look at the episode description. Um, I usually don't. Um, but when we shot off the start here with Emery, I'm like, oh, oh, oh we're cooking because you and me both. Every, you know, I think Emery has turned to our uh, Sid. Where we were like, okay, Sid has mm-hmm. some hope, right? She's they're not gonna give us all this Sid, like, oh, she's good, oh, she's bad, unless they're trying to make her good. But those were quickly dashed. And we'll talk about Sid again. We'll talk about Sid again in this batch of episodes. Yep. I caught it. Sh- I caught it. Thank you, thank you. Cause she didn't show up, but you know, we we uh we know of her and cl- CX the CX trooper definitely talked to her. Um but we'll oh, go let's to talk that. about it. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, sure. I mean, you basically said it. Yeah. <laughs> it like, uh, oh yeah, we intel from the Trandoshan, and I was like, "You son of a bitch!" Son of a bitch! You're not even on screen, and you're still fucking us up. <laughs> oh. 
she, she, you're right. I mean, she led to the downfall of Pabu in a way. I mean, I, I think you can argue that the Empire would get there eventually. And that, that's probably something that, you know, other detractors would say as well. But it's like, no, CX found the weak link, which was, um, and by the way, when we say CX, that's the Clone Force X Trooper, the, the assassin guy. Um, but anyways, um, he talked to Sid, the and that, that found a way. No, I think Tech is dead. Stop it. Rip the band-aid. It's over. It's over. It's over. Um, yeah, I think, I think he's done so. Um, but yeah, so this episode... Back. Who came back? His glasses. Oh, his glasses. Oh, yeah, that was dark. That was sad. And I think that was a way for the audience to be like, okay, we're literally laying his glasses. We're literally laying him to rest. Um, that's how I looked at it. Um, well, well, let's break this down here. Uh, so Identity Crisis follows a family of force with the force sensitive baby at the market here at the very beginning. Um, this was very interesting, uh, basically giving us a small slice of life for this woman, a mother on the run. Um, you know, can't speak English, but I like how visually we can tell like their peril and their situation given the mother's actions. Uh, towards the baby here very protective but you know turn around for one second one minute and the baby's doing some force you know force magic some force wooha uh, force fuckery force fuckery um and we got the snitch neighbor the bitch neighbor um the, the, okay the bitch yeah. snitch, the hash ringing the dash ringing the dash ringing slasher over here, who tells a certain bounty hunter that, hey, yeah, uh, there's a Force-sensitive child. We learned as recently as the previous week and others uh, before that with uh, both the Saj Ventress and uh, Ming-Na Wen's character uh, of um, uh, Fennec Sand um, that the Empire is after uh, the Empire is after Force-sensitive children. They do know that for sure, um, which is why they were after Omega. Um, and who they call in the last person who was in charge of capturing four sensitive children. Did you see this episode of the Clone Wars, Nathan, where Cad Bane was tracking four sensitive for Palpatine? Yeah, I saw this episode. Okay, okay. Just, uh, just I did sure. my homework, Mister Harris. <laughs> oh, good. You're one of the one. Is. You're one of the one people out of like so sixteen. <laughs> Like I, I have like <laughs> thirty two children who never do their homework. Um, I remember, I remember, I got in a, I got in trouble by proxy with a math teacher once, and then like I had to do like that thing where like you write a, a statement out, and I had to do it like hundred times on paper, and I, I did it at home, and I turned it in, and I was like brought it up, and like she was like, oh, I completely forgot about, it. and I was like, this is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You you sent me to a sentence, and you didn't even remember me. That's fucked up. Anyway, you gotta leave an impact, Nathan. You gotta leave an impact. Um. So, so yeah, the drug yeah. neighbor writes up out. Cad Bane shows up, and I, I like the kind of dark atmosphere they're setting up here. Just like you hear the clinks, uh, the whatever the the boots, spurs. the spurs. There we go. Yeah. Um, and right I was like, oh, Boba. <laughs> you just really think Boba's gonna show up for a second? Just because it's I, you know, we made theories last week, or I don't know if it was with you, or I was talking to somebody else about like Boba Fett appearing in the finale. It's still very possible. Um, I, it'll, I'm it'll, surprised he hasn't at all in the show. His pop not at all in this show early on, but it, exactly like he was like the alpha. They keep saying Omega's the Omega, of course, yeah. and uh, Boba Fett's the alpha. Um, and you know, it would make you gotta get that. Uh, we got to get that Cad Bane Boba Fett showdown animated. I think that already happened, though. I think that already, you know, already, unless they wanted to do a flashback. That's right. He had the panel we saw in the fucking first yeah. season. The first oh, canon. <laughs> uh, good old canon. Um, so, uh, Cad Bane throws credit at the, at the uh, snitch neighbor, and we get uh, Cad Bane successfully taking the baby. I, I like how this is just a small world building. Uh, insert for Cad Bane. Um, he's been doing things, uh, as always, quote, for the right price for a long time now uh, for the Empire. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, 
he has no allegiance to anybody. He's able to stoop to these lows, even as a bounty hunter. Uh, no moral qualms with stealing babies, even a young one, just as this one. We'll get to it later on, but he's been doing this for quite some time with the other, uh, as Hemlock would say, um, subjects or, or specimens, he says, um, which is just dehumanizing to the nth degree. Um, speaking of Hemlock, though, we finally meet up with Emery, and this is where the episode gets very interesting, as she asked to replace Nalase as the chief science engineer, um, basically saying, I've been loyal to you for years now, and I think I've done my due, um, and I think I'm ready. And then Hemlock is initially wary, but then he's like, okay, cool. Not, I mean, what other option do they have? They already arrested Nalase due to her disloyalty, and they have one of Hemlock's most loyal people in Emery. Um, so this was a smart move for Hemlock. At least he thinks so. Uh, yeah. Because it's not going to be so smart as, you know, Emery. We've, and this is so interesting. And I, I love how we've been able to track Emery's psychological, uh, you know, state, her mental state all throughout this season. Um, specifically in those first three episodes, as we were seeing her dynamic with Omega and how she was very much trying to placate Omega while still uh, laying down those boundaries with Omega. Like she had those boundaries with Omega in terms of like we got to stick to it, we got to stick to a strict schedule. We got to do this, that, and the third. But Omega was able to chip away a little bit at, uh, at Emery, and we were able to see that through the things that Emery was trying to do with Omega keeping the toy which as we see gets called back here in this episode um and then uh really out for omega safety that part was just very blatant she was very she was always out for omega safety she had that connection to omega people could say whether it was a clone connection or the upbringing connection which i'll talk about later i think there are some upbringing parallels between omega emery and even the uh, specimens as they call it the kids um mm -hmm. So yeah, she finally finds the holding cell for kids. And this is, gets important because there's a lot of good, delicious exposition here. Um, as Hemlock answers a lot of fan theories and fan questions and confirms what we basically already knew, but in more detail here. Um, so I'll try and go, I, I wrote down a quote, a couple quotes here. Um, okay. So Hemlock claims, to rely on force sensitive children. Why do we have to rely on force sensitive children? Uh, even Emery asked that. Like, why, why children? This is kind of disturbing. Um, mm. Hemlock says, well, there's not a lot of force sensitive adults left. Um, <laughs> Thanks. I wonder whose fault that. <laughs> right, Nathan? Isn't that so funny? It's like um, the Empire's fault for massacring a lot of the Force sensitive throughout the galaxy, in particular, of course, to Jedi, uh, thanks to the efforts of Vader's and the clones, um, for massacring all the Jedi. And then we have, uh, what's it called? And then we had Rampart obliterate all the Kaminoans besides Nala Se, who is just now arrested. So it's like, Kaminoans, gone. Force sensitive adults, gone. That's why the Empire has to stoop to these lows of getting Force-sensitive children, which is causing them to have these errors. Thank, I mean, thank God for these comedy of errors here with the Empire really putting themselves uh, in a bind because of their own actions. I mean, that's good for the rest of the galaxy at large. Uh, but it just goes to show how the Empire is just so short-sighted in their actions because they want to have that complete and utter control that they don't really think down the line, or at least in Palpatine's sense, uh, you know, the longevity of the Empire is at risk because of the Empire itself and the short-sightedness of the Empire. It's very funny. Um, yeah. But yeah, here, uh, so yeah, here, here's the quote here. Um, M-Count cannot be directly replicated from the source. We kind of knew that part already. You can't really replicate M-Count. Like, if I wanted to get nathan's m counts i can't just put a syringe in nathan get his m count and then just transfer it over to me um there has to be a middle person there has to be a proxy per se so now i'll say uh continuing the quote here now i'll say you knew of another way which is why she aided in omega's escape omega's blood is the only binder 
that's been proven to be compatible with their DNA. Again, DNA being a force sensitive. Um, DNA to recreate their M count levels. Omega must be found. Um, and then again, so that quote in general saying her blood is able to coincide with that of the kids and able to recreate their M count levels near perfectly. Um, there is no degradation, which has been the constant issue with the other clones and their other and the clones' blood from the other uh, subjects on Tantus. They kept trying to get the clones, get their blood, match it with the kids. Constant degradation. As soon as they tested Omega's blood, M count stayed the same, even when mixed in or however they're collaborating with the kids' DNA. Um, there was no degradation. It was a perfect match, um, which is why, again, Omega must be found so they're able to have that seamless transfer. Um, so uh, he goes on to say, Kids are easier to capture and subjugate, claims Emlock. Uh, and I, I like how he continues to mention as Emery walks around the room, like, uh, don't call them by their names. Have that boundary with them, um, which was very disturbing. Um, you know, Hemlock is such a fascinating and dark individual, but he's always keeping that boundary between him and the others. Um, not that it would help because he's already a sick individual in the head, um, but he really tries to like yeah. dehumanize them at every turn. Um, so yeah, that, that was just pretty damn dark. Um, and again, I, just, I like how Emery's whole she was shocked by this. She was not aware of this situation at all. I mean, granted, she's kind of like the proxy for the audience because we had no idea what was going on here. But instantly, when yeah. you put kids in a room, it's just sick. It's just dark um, immediately, just on a visual level. Um, classrooms, and, exactly. Classrooms. It's just horrible. Why, why do we even have schools? Nick cares. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. but it is like interesting because, like, when you hear, you know, throughout all of the seasons, like, we're just building up, it's like the secret room that's locked off, like, layer after layer, and Palpatine, like, creeps in there, and it's a room called Project Necromancy. You think you do think ideally back there is like, oh, there's so many like test subjects, and probably like tubes full of like failed misshapen clones and shit and like just like the darkest body horrors behind there and you go in and it's just children and I, I mm -hmm. like a glance you'd be like oh but then you, it seeps in with knowing what the Empire is capable of just how worse that really is exactly that's a good point because like you go in there and it's a bright room it's bright it's light then you look down and you see children and you're like oh oh yeah this is not it's unsettling um, and unexpected yeah. And I think that's where really, that's really what uh, Nalase was impacted by. Like, oh wait, these are just children, um, which again could relate to her and her. Lance sterile, one toy. One toy. Uh, they had no toy. They had a. Uh, they had those like had, science like, like, I guess, like, Yeah, and that, that's like the extent. Like it's just blank walls, nothing. To, there's no view of the outside. Uh, just these isolating rooms that. There's just no kid. It's just you would think it's just the empire might understand. Like, hey, fucking, if we just like put some shit, that will entertain them. It'll distract them better. Because what what are they doing besides just sitting there to be like needle prods? Nothing. Like, let's <laughs> just like stimulate them to be like, all right, cool. As long as they're not pushing back, we'll be fine. That's a great point. It's kind of like, um, in a way, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to help out the empire, but an, an easy no. way to, you know, subjugate somebody, get them on your side who initially isn't, but by deems of capture or whatever, like, you know, placate them, give them the sugar. You, you got to handle and griddle it, right? Like, give them yeah. the candy, give them that safety, the security, give them that, like, uh, you know, some optimism within the cage, right? Like, uh, it's yeah. the famous, uh, what is it called? The, the garden in the cage phenomenon, where it's like uh, you see the beautiful flowers, you see the hope that lives inside of a certain setting, but then, you know, realistically, there's always going to be a cage. Um, I, I talked about that a lot with uh, Attack on Titan, um, given yeah, how it really, like, it, there's walls. Oh, yeah. I really does just go to show, like, the whole architecture of the empire really is just kind of built off of you know no like real like sense of understanding for 
any form of humanity. It's all such a cold system. It's if it's if it's not like the cheapest way, it's the most effective, torturous way to put things in line to how you want them, as opposed to just like naturally having it work for you. You're forcing it things into a box to make it work by the mighty grip of the empire. Uh, the same with their own armies is like the cool clones are expensive and they're are lots let's just go to a very cheap expansive people who want to fight for their galaxy angle and that's why you get stormtroopers that aren't as well equipped as and trained as clones great point yes exactly the empire is just really forcing down their rule which only instigates more uh rebellions uh externally and internally as the case is with emery uh emery goes to not say because she's kind of shook by all this she's like was your plan, this is an interesting line, that I didn't really take notice of until I was doing my rewatch in my uh, notes here, but she says, if the plan was to discard them too, T-O-O, -O, uh, when she's in Nartana State, she's like, was your plan to discard the kids as well? And this makes, uh, this kind of tracks with what, uh, or could at least, if, I, if it's referring to what I think it's referring to, in the sense that, like, Emery could be saying, uh, is it your plan to discard them too, like she did with the other clones on Camino? Because we know on Camino, if, if a batch of clones didn't go well, put them in the trash, basically. Um, yeah. And this could have happened with Emery or people that you know, people that Emery knows, where maybe Emery was discarded, and then she was taken in by you know who, by Hemlock. Um, yeah. And maybe this is why she has been so obedient and so uh, trusting. Of hemlock a because she had no other option and b maybe she uh felt deserted by the kaminoans and then felt useful to the empire um it, it's a, it's a possible it's a possibility there's two there's two things that i'm curious if we're going to learn more about i think well i think one more so than the other um one are we going to learn more about emery's past her just a couple of lines of dialogue talking about like her upbringing um oh we got a runner outside um what <laughs> i didn't do it um and then second b crosshair are, are we gonna um i love when it turns off right outside my house like hey um why the lights <laughs> flashing on my face <laughs> it's the uh transformers i don't know how but they found me run for it marty anyway. uh do back to the feed at some point we got you um i i really want to check out our commentaries like the uh the most common decade that we've done for our commentaries. I'm very curious about that. Maybe you should do a list it's, about that. I mean, it's 2010. Probably probably. Good... Maybe, but I think there's a high bar of like 80 to 90 era. Really? You think so? Uh, kind of. I mean, we have a, a good amount, but then also we do like a, mo a lot of modern ones as well. But then we also have done franchises that have spanned for 70s to now that's true yeah i feel like we haven't just watched a lot of like classics like pre 90s stuff um yeah but you're right we did like aliens and predator and terminator we didn't do terminator on here right no no we, didn't. we haven't done Terminator yet uh watching? we have uh, i mean we did like all fast and furious so you know that's a big chunk of thousands and yeah such. That's interesting. Saw franchise like all early two thousands into the twenty tens. Um, yeah. So yeah, the, the horror ones are really giving us the early two thousand vibes for sure. Um, but anyways, oh, yeah. Uh, so so yeah, I, I just I just like how Nalase and Emery are kind of like or Emery, uh, sorry, Nalase is putting a lot of the onus on Emery, saying, um, "What does she say?" Uh, Basically, it, it's up to you now. The kids are going to be looking up to you because I'm gone. Um, so that's kind of dark. Um, yeah. And then, but yeah, she connects with uh, a lot of the uh, kids here. One of the kids, I think, was named Ava, uh, yeah. the one, the, the red horned uh, girl. Um, and then uh, we see Jax, who is the green one, I think. Um, yes. Who tries to escape? And this this where we get to the escape sequence where Jack uh, quickly tries to escape on Emery's like first day here. Basically, Emery tries to regain control, but Jack pushes her aside. And this is because earlier in the episode he saw a key code, so he thought he could replicate the key code uh, at the door. 
Turns out when the lockdown gets started, the key code gets locked itself and he can't get out. Mm -hmm. um, and then the clones, uh, the clone troopers come in there, they stun him. And Emery is shocked and just like appalled by the action. The clones are just like, we're just following orders. We're just he wasn't orders. the only one stunned that day. Oh, wow. <laughs> you should be a news reporter. Um, uh, so, yeah. But, but the Empire had bigger plans. <laughs> <laughs> Previously on the Bad Batch. Um, so yeah, this, this was interesting. This is kind of like a, another spark for within Emery. Like, oh man, these kids are not in the right well-being. And if the escape wasn't harsh enough for Emery, um, we followed up with A, going to Cad Bane and kind of seeing like, okay, the kids that she's been with are kind of like what? 10, 9, 8, something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I would say like 8 to 10, yeah. 8 to 10. Which means Cad Bane to see the kid at the beginning of the episode. It's not even a kid; it's a baby. Um, and this really sparks Emery, where Emery's kind of like, "Oh wait, wow, this is this is very young." And even Cad Bane catches on to it, where Cad Bane is kind of like, uh, she, she, "He sees the horror on Emery's face. Like you can't hide your face." Uh, and give me my give me my money, by the way. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Um, so that was kind that of was interesting. funny. He. he she was like, I needed to t run a test to make sure uh, we're all good here. And then as she's going to do it, he's like, my payment? And I'm like, motherfucker, you wait for the result. <laughs> uh, yeah, he just grabbed a random child. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that kind of, that younger baby, when, when she realizes, like, wow, we're getting, like, really, we're getting into the younger ages here. This really also horrifies Emery. On top of that... Mm -hmm. We go. We move on to the next scene with Emery, at least sticking with Emery, um, and she realizes the other kid has been solitary for like two days. Imagine just being eight years old, stuck in solitary for two days, uh, oh. and then Ava says, "Like, is he ever going to come back? Like, I kind of miss my friend." It's, it's a very dark, lonely world that Emery is, and then she's just trying to. She's trying to reinforce like this boundary. Like ever since that incident, she's like, "Don't call me by Emery. Like call me by call me like a scientist or whatever." She's trying to reinforce that boundary, even though it's like cracking slowly but surely inside of her. Um, she can't handle it. Um. So yeah, and then this, this stage. I wrote basically wrote my notes here. The stage is set for Emery to fully switch over once Omega arrives. Once she realizes that um. Omega, who the person that she was getting very close to, um, once she's there, Omega's like, as we know for Omega, she's able to crack through those defenses. And she wasn't able to yeah. do it initially. Uh, she had an escape, but now that now that Omega's back, you better trust that we're going to get some more breaking uh, internally within Emery. Um, so that was the end of the episode. But, and, oh, and it kind of ends with uh, Emery laying down the toy that she kept from Omega. You, you, we saw her take it away. It. We saw her take it away in the finale, or the premiere episode, but we thought, you know, right. she threw it away or anything, but she kept it, and then she's giving it to one of the kids. She places it in the middle of the uh, room there, just as, like, a gift for the kids. Um, just kind of, again, that, that hope within the darkness. Um, very, very sad and depressing. Um, so, but setting the stage for the following up ep following episode, we meet Tarkin. Uh, going back a couple scenes here, uh, we see Tarkin in the episode talking to Hemlock, and Tarkin is hilarious. He's a, he's a, he's a comedian, man, because um, he's he's having that same kind of uh, not I don't I don't want to say jealousy, but like um, he's upset at Hemlock for using more funds than what is necessary. Uh, for his project Necromancer. Tarkin yeah. has no idea what product Necromancer is. The only person who do know is Emperor Palpatine and Hemlock. So Hemlock and does not is, care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the funny bit because like we know like from the episode Palpatine was in, it was like, hey, he, he straight up from the horse's mouth, like, whatever you need, just do it. Just get it done. All right, cool. A blank check. I already got the okay. And I think Hemlock is fully aware, so he, I think he just kind of has... 
I, I imagine he has that mindset when like Tarkin's like kind of pseudo threatening him. And he's like, "Bitch, fucking, I got the Emperor right here." <laughs> yeah, it, it, you see that in your workplace all the time. Like when you talk to like uh, you know, for example, if you talk to like the principal or whatever, this this didn't this never happened to me or whatever. But like if the principal tells you you can do something and you're doing it, then another teacher shows up and says, "Hey, are you allowed to do that? You shouldn't be doing that." It's like you don't know my conversation with the higher ups. Like who who do you think you are? Granted, that didn't that never happened to me. I'm just making bullshit up. Um, but it's like that happens in the workplace all the time. When you talk to a boss or whoever's in charge, they tell you that you can do something secretly. Yes, secretly, but just confidentially. Um, and then uh, yeah. somebody else thinks they know more than you. <laughs> yeah, that happens to all the jobs. Yeah. Where it's like somebody thinks they know more than they actually do. They just make themselves look like an idiot. I yeah, I literally would like I would have like a i'd see people on their phone right so i'll be like all right i'll just like check my phone quickly and then i get scolded for it and then after that person leaves the higher the way higher supervisors like what you never answer your phone i try calling you it's like, what the fuck i'm on shift <laughs> it's okay <laughs> uh by the way i'm terrible because in in middle school right now uh I, I share my phone number with of course the other middle school teachers um but I, I always have my phone on silent, like twenty four seven. My phone's on silent. I, I hate vibrates, uh, um, and I feel like an old person. But like my phone never on vibrate. But during school, like if there's a problem with the kid or somebody's looking for a laptop, I have like the English teacher or the math teacher calling me, the principal calling me, and I look at my phone. It's like ten minutes oh. ago, two missed calls. I'm like, ah, I was in the middle of teaching. Like I, I didn't like. I'm, I'm yeah. always so used to like, especially in college. Uh, in the programs, they're always just like, make sure your phone's off during teaching. You only turn it on during break or whatever. Um, granted, no, no teacher ever does that. Our phones are always on. But it's like, I, I, would, I always just grew up never looking down at my phone, especially in front of kids. Like, it's kind of weird. Um, so yeah, now I just, I keep my phone on vibrate during school hours and I turn it on silent afterwards. Um, yeah, like what are you supposed to do in the middle of a, like a like a lesson? You just like stop mid paragraph, and be like, "Oh, I gotta take this step out in the hall." Like, yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. Sometimes if it's from the printer, I'm like, "Okay, I'll just stop everything." And, you know, it's usually important. Take notes. They, like, walk out. They usually don't call me for nothing. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, basically, again, but we've seen this from Tarkin before numerous times, and I I love how it tracks. So a, we see him do this in Rogue One. Uh, Tarkin really wasn't fully on board with the Death Star program at the time called Project uh, what, Stardust, right? Um, wait, was Stardust yeah. the project or the antidote? I forget. Um, project, project Stardust, yeah. Project Stardust, Antidote. Okay. Or like the secret, the secret, uh, you know, the way to blow up the Death Star. Oh, what was that that's, called? That's a design flaw. <laughs> oh, no, just... a design flaw, okay. I thought, like, I thought Galen yeah. called it something. Um, Anyways, yeah. uh, you just said it was under Project Stardust. Got it. Okay. Uh, so Project Stardust was the Death Star program. Uh, and, you know, Tarkin wasn't fully on board with it. But then he immediately swoops in and takes credit once he as kills As soon Tarkin. as it works, yeah. he's just like, oh, I'm so glad that the Emperor will love what I've provided for him. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, he kind of takes full credit for it, um, which is kind of hilarious. Tarkin is one of the rare uh, governors following the fall of the Republic to immediately get a high position within the Empire based on his stance towards clones, his stance towards the Jedi during the Clone Wars, um, and his close relationship to Senator Palpatine during all that time of the prequels. Um, but he, it feels like he wants to keep that position all throughout the empire, and he keeps like belittling and stealing from others every chance he gets. I, um, I feel like he just has that sense of like untouchability uh, in yeah, his mind, like exactly. even, even so, because it's not like this started post episode four after he died. Like the entire like nineteen year gap, Vader is a very vicious machine uh, tool of the empire, and. You see, even as Rogue One, he kind of just like calls on him like a muscle, like, "Oh, okay, well, fucking ace up the sleeve, send him in." Yeah, exactly. Like, Go do this. Like, he like he doesn't give a shit. He's just like, "I, yeah, whatever. I'm not scared." Tarkin was never. Me. I'm the. I'm, I'm Tarkin. Yeah, Tarkin was never faced by Vader's like uh, his will or whatever. And there's a great Tarkin and Vader chapter again in the 2017 Charles Soul run. 
um, that kind of reinforces that as well. Um, also, we see that in my favorite Star Wars show, Rebels, uh, with yeah. uh, Thrawn, right? Throughout season three and season four, Thrawn's plan for the Empire, which seemed very efficient, was, hey, our uh, TIE fighters are terrible. Um, maybe if we use the TIE Defender project, we will have more success in our captures, etc. And the TIE Defenders are very brutal, very efficient uh, program. But of course, Tarkin deemed it not so, especially with the height of the uh, Project Stardust in the future. Like he kind of dismissed Thrawn's Tie Defender project and had Thrawn do other things. And when the Rebels kind of blew up the, uh, you know, the factory, the Tie Defender factories, Thrawn or Tarkin didn't really bat an eye there. Um, so like he's either dismissive of you or if it's successful, he kind of takes your credit for it. Um, so either way, yeah. Tarkin really wants to like budget control and you know gauge what's going on with between the other compartments within the Empire. It's, it's very funny. Whether it's Thrawn, Krennic, Vader, uh, he's always doing that. And he tried again here with Hemlock. Thrawn probably is like the one person that could go like toe to toe with Tarkin of like these these bullshit maneuvers through each other, just being like, all right, well, if he denies me, like I I know how to like play around him, but like if he sees my track record, we'll probably a okay me, like I I can work him. Exactly, which we, which we saw in Rebels, like season three or maybe the final season. It's like uh, Thrawn was showing results, but then he got pulled away in the beginning of season four, which is why he wasn't on with all during like the Kanan stuff, um, and because of yeah. that, you know, yeah, he the whole... yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was like, hey, I, I killed the Jedi for you. And it's like, yeah, and you destroyed our whole fuel refiner. Exactly. You destroyed everything we needed for the TIE Defender project. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and it kind of like. And you threw a blanket over it with a parade. <laughs> exactly. Thrawn was very mad. Because again, that was the TIE Defender stuff was Thrawn's, was Thrawn's baby. And it was kind of blown away over, over one night, over one Dune night. Uh, rest in peace. Um, uh, oh. So then Hemlock calls up, as we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, Hemlock calls up the CX Trooper. The Trooper claims to have info from the Chindoshin, which we know is Sid. And it led him to the pirate, which we know in the next episode here is Fee. Um, also, oh. small tidbit before we go on to the next episode, point of no return. Hemlock says other operatives aren't ready for the field, unlike the CX Trooper that we've been following. Um, and the image he pans down on his data pad and we see like an image of uh, some troopers. And Star Wars Explained, Alex said like uh, these images could be an early, uh, what is it called? Early concept of like dark troopers, cyborg kind of troopers, because um, they look oh. more mechanical. They look more mechanical in nature. So we could be in for some yeah. more upgraded, uh, hypnotized clones, a la the CX trooper, but stronger. Um, oh man. Possibly, as, as we move on to the finale. Um, but anyways, point of no return. This is going to be a not as much depth as the first one, first episode here. But this was just a very intense, consistently intense and ominous episode. Really following up everything here. I loved it. Evan, they did it. Fuck. <laughs> they got him. They got him. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? No, they got no, no, not that one. <laughs> Um, they got Pabu, planet. We, we thought Pabu was so safe, Nathan. But yeah, we, we've been saying this for you know the past season now. With this inception in season two, it's like it's only a matter of time before the Empire makes their way to Pabu. Um, unfortunately, it happened in Point of No Return, and I hated every second of it. This sucks. Every second. And um, it's 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 effect, it's especially not made great that like not only did our ship get blown up. But after we put all of our resources on the ship, it then got blown. I know, yeah, that, that was the dark part. And I, I like that you mentioned uh, the resources here, because at the beginning of the episode, we see the Bad Batch getting ready to leave, uh, putting a lot of their resources on, um, on like, uh, their ship. They're getting ready to leave. They're getting their uh, food and stuff ready. Um, and... They're, they're getting ready to leave Pabu. I think this is instigated by, uh, like, Asad Deventris saying, like, you can't, you know, you can't hide out here forever. If I found it, the Empire is only around the corner, basically. 
So they're, they're taking their lead in leaving, but we know it's already too late. Because because earlier in the episode, the first scene was like, uh, since the CX trooper finally finding Fee and sneaking on board her ship and basically downloading her navigation log, her navigation history, finding some consistencies which led the CX trooper straight to Tantus and the CX trooper informs his boss that, hey, they might be on Tantus. And once he gets there, he uh, definitely sees evidence of that. Um, so that, that was a very tense opening. And it kind of clouds the rest of the episode, or at least his early part in dread, because you know what's coming. Uh, as Thanos says, run from it, or whatever he says. You can't run from it. Uh, bullshit, Thanos dialogue. Dread it, run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. <laughs> I hate you, Nathan. And now it's here, or should I say, I am. <laughs> How many times have we watched Infinity War in Endgame? I mean, I've seen Endgame more than Infinity War. That's interesting to me. That's very interesting. I, I think I, gotta, I want to. I want to say in completion, I've probably seen Endgame fifteen times. Wow! Because I saw I saw it like eight times in theaters, and then Damn. I saw. I watched it on home release a few times. How can you watch Tony die 15 times in theaters? It's been six years, god damn it. <laughs> Which is yeah, insane. I think I saw Endgame like two or three times in theaters and then once or twice on streaming. I think I don't I even went, know then. Yeah, I don't even know. I went seven times opening weekend. That's Sick for a three-hour movie. Yeah, it was I did a, I did a twice Thursday, once Friday, twice Saturday, once Sunday, once Monday. Oh, that didn't sound, that didn't sound too crazy. Now that I say it, no, it wasn't like my No Way Home where I definitely did one day with four showings in one day. That's sick. So you, which led, I did break my record there it's in ten times. You caused the uh, two hundred like fifty million box office for No Way Home, or um, I stole. Nine people's good seats. <laughs> to say that too, um, oh, but yeah, careful. back to the bad batch here. Omega and the mayor's daughter are putting text glasses on like this uh, display that a lot of the uh, what do they call it? Um, a, lot, a lot of the citizens put their stuff on display. Um, and and Nathan, <laughs> Nathan, this basically is like telling us visually, tech is gone. Moving on, no, on it's tech. reinforcing the memory of him to be like, yeah. "Hey guys, don't get tech completely out of your mind because you're gonna want to, you're gonna want to buckle up." For it. Nathan, I, I think you know we have like four episodes left. Just let me have it. Just let me have it. I, 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 I want you to, I want to let you have this, but for me, um, I'm like, do you want to rip the band aid now or wait to the finale where you look like a goose egg, like? Where's Tech? He never came back. Yeah, because he was dead 16 episodes ago. I'm in a position where like I'm living in denial of the death, but if it doesn't come, then I'll I will I will accept it. You will accept it. I'm not I'm not like living here just like where's Ben? He didn't <laughs> say goodbye. He got no last scene. He said ow. Still haunts me. Will we get anything in the Ray movie? We'll probably get like the, the solo dice. <laughs> okay, who has the Falcon now? Is Chewie still around? What's going on? Is Chewie still around? You think you think they're gonna be that bald to kill off Chewie off screen? Well, no, I just mean like this is him and the Falcon still around. I mean, because I guess it was just her and BB-8 in the last scene. That's a great point. The Falcon. Like, what is this Ray movie get, like? Do they does Lucasfilm want to wipe the slate clean? And just be like everybody's off screen, basically doing their own shit, and this is Ray's journey. Or are there going to be uh, I mean, she's supposed any to, callbacks? She's uh, supposed to, you know, rumor has it, she has uh, students in, like 10 years later, I think. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I imagine BB-8 sticking with her more than anybody, even though it's posed droid. <laughs> 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 we love Ray anyway. But, uh... Yeah. What we're talking about, tech? We're talking about BB-8. Um, just kidding. Yeah, so Tech, uh, this ominous episode. Uh, so yeah, the CX Trooper lands in the Pabu Cave. Uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh, he got lucky again. This Trooper gets lucky all the time. 
because he's he's like jet streaming it on on the way there. Uh, he's putting in his camouflage code to take him off the signal, and Rucker just so happens to be out of the ship, so he's not on the signal detector thingamabob, and uh, mm. he misses seeing that, yeah, somebody has entered our airspace, basically. Um, just It's so unfortunate timing there. Um, Let's go, the but, assassin's kind of sloppy when you think about it. He, he Loki very much is, but he's just gotten very lucky. Like his infiltration in the other two part episode when they were with Rex and them, uh, mm -hmm. was pretty skilled, but also very sloppy. He he almost didn't make it out of there alive. <laughs> uh, so well, I think you, know. you you fell from a great height. Okay, I I I could see if they were going to reveal tech anywhere that it might be this guy, but also I. I was sitting there listening, and the voice, more than anything, sounds closer to Crosshair. And then I was like, what if they fucking clone Crosshair? And it's like the superior version whose hand isn't fucked up, and he has to overcome him. Oh, shit. I think you've watched too much, uh, I don't know, sci-fi material. That sounds crazy. Um, sci-fi material? No, I'm just watching Invincible. Nice. <laughs> A lot of clones. Who's the original clone? Yeah. <laughs> Worlds are so fun, man. Yeah, they're great. Um... But yeah, so he got lucky, uh, and basically, Wrecker and Gonky get blown up once he, uh, once the CX trooper sees Tech, or sorry, he sees Omega, sees Hunter, locates their ship, instantly like puts all the bombs on it, blows it up. Wrecker grabs Gonky and gets blown up into the water, which basically takes him out for the rest of the episode. Um, yeah. So yeah, the CX trooper confronts the mayor and basically says, like, we can do a lot worse because the mayor is livid. Piss, because darkness shines over darkness not shines clouds over Pabu here <laughs> as the Empire with their sh there's a beautiful shot haunting shot of the Star Destroyer coming down from the clouds it, it was stunning yeah. um, and then they basically destroy all of the means of escape the docks are destroyed the ships the boats all destroyed there's no room for escape here um, it was basically like closes off like or just harkens to all the tension in this episode and th the way i liked this episode so much was like i could really put myself in their situation and be like what would i do in the situation how is they how are they going to possibly escape and i instantly thought of crosshair's plan which was a plan in episode uh three when they were escaping tantus it was like we got to use their ship to get the hell out of there just hijack one of their ships pretty cut and dry um yeah. So that's what Hunter tries to do. He tries to hijack one of the clone transport ships. Um, he successfully gets on there, almost is in control of it. But then the pilot was like, I got a live one on me. I can't shake him. Can't shake and him. It's like, oh, bet. <laughs> oh. He shoots him. He shoots the trooper in no like, point blank. Yeah, no remorse. I love this. Um, I'm trying to remember this happened recently in something else, but it just, it, it was so, it felt so familiar, but also so badass and unfortunate at the same time. I feel like um, I'm time, man. It's something. Something happened recently. It's like, oh, yeah, just got to shoot the pilot or whatever, shoot the driver or something, whatever. Um, yeah. But yeah, this was, that was pretty dark. Um, maybe it was June. I don't know. No. Maybe or right, yeah, in Dune when Jessica, Lady Jessica, and uh, Paul were trying to escape, they just, they turned off the uh, ship. I don't, I don't know. Um, anyways, um, not that one. I know. I know. I know. Um, so basically, like Hunter is just left in the water. Um, so Hunter's in the water. Wrecker's knocked out, and it's just Crosshair, Omega, and Batcher. Omega talks to Crosshair. Is like, I gotta escape. I gotta get the heck out of here. And this was pretty unfortunate, but also very mature for Omega. She's witnessing the carnage that is the falling uh, Pabu, and she realizes that like the only way for them to be safe, and she's always worried about other people more than herself. We know that for sure. Um, yeah. And she turns herself in. It was very mature. Um, and Alex Star Wars Explained also went in how it was also very similar to um, Omega's, they're not similar, but like it runs counter to Omega's earlier actions in season one, season two, when she initially got captured by Fennec Shand um, mm. in season one. Like she was so worried about ever going back there, ever being captured again, not in Tantus, but just captured by the Empire. 
Hunter like it'll never happen again. She was so worried. But now the roles are reversed and she's mature enough to be like, I'm ready to go back into the lion's den, into the underworld, basically, um, and face what may happen there. Uh, she And she's so confident and sure of herself because she escaped the first time. And she even tells Crosshair, like, you know, you can keep a tracker on me. Like, they'll find a tracker. It's like, you know, but I trust you, Crosshair. I trust you, Crosshair. And I'm like, I trust you too, Crosshair. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who do they think they are? We are. I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was that was an interesting the way that things ran out because um, I, as they were checking for the tracker, I was like, I almost feel like you have to give them something to find, otherwise, it's too easy, and they're probably exactly. more suspicious. For sure. Um, so when that when that happened, I'm like, okay, great. You got you gave them the easy bait because yeah, she they basically like they uh, they check her things and they instantly see the easy like big ass tracker in her shirt or whatever. And they're like, okay, we got you. Nice try. Put her on the ship. And this is when the tension is just like heightened because she's walking slowly, fire burning on the docks, Crosshair fighting the other troopers, struggling to get her. And then they look up, the ship's leaving. He aims, but then the hand twitches. Oh, well. Holy shit. So, yeah, the hand twitches. He also got attacked by troopers. And yeah. That delayed and as it took off, but like when I was like looking at the framing of it, I was like, I think he might have made it if it didn't if it didn't go farther, but it did. But it did. Oh my god! Oh my god! And then oh. when she's on the ship, and then she like defeatedly takes off her helmet, I was like, is there a tracker under the helmet? <laughs> <laughs> but she does like, fast she, one. She does breathe calmly. She kind of like meditates. Which again, we talked about that in depth. Uh, in our last hyperspace hype episode, with the uh, with Crosshair mm -hmm. meditating, and then with uh, Asajj as well, like she's learning to meditate and really using what she learned from Gunji to calm her senses and stay driven for what's ahead. Um, this was this was just a great episode for Omega. Um, it was heartbreaking, blew me away. It was why last week I was like, "Holy shit, that was insane!" Um, yeah, like we got. Uh, Heartbreaking episode of um, the Bad Batch two weeks ago, and then la last week we got a heartbreaking episode of X Men ninety seven. It was it was just uh, yeah. back to back, um, but yeah. And then our final Bad Batch episode was Juggernaut, uh, Nathan's favorite X Men character, right? Juggernaut, uh, yeah. yeah, right. This was your favorite one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Omega. <laughs> landing on the uh, 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 I'm indifferent on Juggernaut. I mean his film adaptations have been stellar. He's supposed to be Xavier's brother. We don't yeah. touch on that. They don't really touch on that. Yeah. Opposed to see Cassandra Nova and Deadpool and Wolverine. Xavier's sister. Yeah. Uh you know, twin who It's a family, Mr. Only Child in the X Mansion. <laughs> exactly right. Um but yeah, yeah Juggernaut. Know. This was a pretty short and sweet episode, but it still uh, intense and still action packed, nonetheless. So this kind of takes place right after the previous episode. Hunter now knows of Omega's situation. He kind of was informed off screen, basically. Um, they're upset, but they're not like "fuck you, Crosshair." How could you let her do this? And Crosshair basically like it's your uh, fault. You wanted her to get captured. Like I'm glad they're past that. I agreed. Uh, I'm so happy this knowledge just like they're kicking Crosshair when he's obviously down. Um, but you see, when he puts his hand on his chest, it's still like shaking, given like what happened to Omega. Like this hand thing, and he talks about it. He didn't talk about the hand, but he basically says, like, uh, I think I know of a way to get back to Tantus. And like, wait, why didn't you tell us this sooner? And he's like, Well, I didn't want to go back there. I was scared. I didn't want to go back there. I, I think he used the word scared. Um, yeah, he he just he doesn't want to go back there, which is kind of relatable, uh, given to what we know of his past, um, and it kind of reflects what we heard from the trooper in that episode when they uh, when they're interrogating the uh, other CX trooper CX one, you could say, um, and uh, he says like, oh yeah, Crosser, why don't you tell them about what happened with the program, the CX program? The clone trooper x program and what your role in that was and 
Crosshair admitted that he wasn't part of it, but there could have been a lot more darker things that happened to him that we were just unaware of. And this is why I said at the beginning of the episode of this podcast here, like, are we going to learn more about what happened with Crosshair within that program? Maybe, maybe not, but it is interesting that we're learning more, or at least Crosshair is telling us about all the dark things uh, that are happening to him and why he's so scared. And this could be affecting, I mean, this obviously, it's not could be, this is obviously the reason why his hand is twitching. Ever since he left Tantus, left that place of darkness, he's been having these issues. And I think the only way to heal is to confront that pain head on, which we're eventually leading towards, obviously. Um, so I like this through line of this hand. We'll definitely see that continue. Um, uh, but then, yeah, we see the safe trooper make make uh, take Omega straight to Tantus. Um, Hemlock greets her, says you made the right decision, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, I said Crosshair, blah blah blah. Oh, so yeah, Crosshair go back. Sorry to go back to it, but Crosshair said um, Admiral Rampart might know a way to get back to Tantus when we meet back up with them. And this was interesting. I did not expect to see Rampart back. It kind of reminded me of, uh, especially with the beard that we see in the later scenes, it reminded mm. me of, uh, you know, Callus in uh, mm. Rebels. Granted, Callus became a good guy, or Rampart is still an asshole. Um, right. But it's just interesting that they always humanize somebody by adding a beard. That's the easiest way to humanize somebody that was bad. Just give them a beard and have them in some comedic situations and people instantly are like, oh, this guy's maybe not that bad. Uh, it was very funny. Um, he's just like me. He's just like me, exactly. Um, so yeah, I don't remember. Might no way to get there, but uh, they need to. They need a way to get off the planet, and that's when Fee arrives and says, "Like, oh, I found a way through some cave systems in Tantus." I'm like, or in Pabu. I'm like, these cave systems. First, uh, Asajj in a cave. Uh, Clone Force, Clone Trooper X makes his way through the caves. And then Fee makes your way to the caves. They need some security. They need to lock down these caves tight. Like, what the hell is going on here? This is getting crazy. Um, so this, this is, is getting crazy. out of hand. This is getting out of hand. Um, no, there are two. <laughs> so Fee says uh, she knows where they're keeping her, him, which is in Erebus. Erebus, um, which is a prison labor camp. Or there's a prison labor camp on the planet of Erebus. And it reminded me of um, it, it reminded me of um in, in Andor. Um oh, I didn't know what you said. Uh, <laughs> you said Erebus and I was like I don't speak it. <laughs> Terrible. We just lost our whole Arabic <laughs> audience. Um oh no um, um but yeah so it's a prison labor camp and this is interesting. Uh, Star Wars explained, Alex said that Erebus is, in mythology terms, the personification of darkness and also the son of chaos. Um, also, um, in terms of the underworld, it is the, uh, the area of, it's a dark part of the underworld that souls need to pass in order to reach the depths of the underworld a la Hades. Um, if, if anybody would pay attention to uh, our Percy Jackson episodes of uh, Micah Batty, um, when Percy and them arrive on in the underworld, uh, it isn't all just one domain. Yes, it's one, you know, one area of the world, hence the underworld, but there are multiple levels and multiple realms within the underworld. They're like the, the fields of apostle, where if, like if you're good, you can just stay here. There's the fields of the dead or whatever they're called. I mean, I might have that mixed up. But like there's the fields of like if you lived a good life, you can stay there. Um, and then there's the fields of death. And if you uh, did bad things, you'll be stuck there for the rest of eternity. Um, and I think Erebus in Greek mythology is the region before you get to the fields. It's an area before you get there. Um, it might even be before... Uh, you cross the river Styx. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but in Star Wars... What if terms, I, oh. Yeah. What if I stay in the field? What if I don't progress? Which fields? I mean, 
What if I just don't progress beyond anything other than the final destination? Then you stay there and somebody you just force me to? you live in limbo. But I, I think somebody forces okay. you to cross the river, and then once you cross the river, you gotta wait in line. Eternity and, uh, is mine. <laughs> yeah. uh, I didn't like people anyway. No, okay. you're screwed. But like you know, uh, you know, there's no resurrection possibilities if you do that or whatever. I don't know. Uh, reincarnation. I mean, a resurrection. Reincarnation. That's right. Um, that's the thing. That's the thing. In Greek mythology, at least. Um, there's no afterlife. It's a continuous loop. <laughs> Stay exactly. Um, but in Star Wars terms, this is interesting, and we talk about this a lot in Star Wars. But um, it's the characters. If this is true, I mean, it is true. <laughs> but like uh, in Greek mythology, the, the Erebus of it all. If we take in the location meaning of Erebus in Greek mythology, in terms of like the gateway, the gateway realm leading into the depths of the underworld. Putting that in Star Wars terms, this episode Juggernaut is the gateway area before we get into the underworld. What's the underworld in the Bad Batch? Tantus. They got to get to Tantus. That's the underworld within this essence, uh, within this series. Um, and we've seen this plenty of times throughout Star Wars media. Uh, Last Jedi, uh, you know, back when that was happening, Rey basically putting herself in a coffin, coffin symbolizing uh, safety from the dead, uh, putting herself in a coffin, uh, shipping herself off to Kylo Ren uh, on uh, the supremacy. Supremacy being the underworld where Hades, hence Snoke, stood on his throne. Um, and then you see that in uh, Return of the Jedi, uh, Luke basically shipping himself off with his father into the underworld uh, where Sidious was on his throne, a la Hades. Um, and so it happens a lot in Star Wars where the heroine or the hero ships themselves off into the underworld. And I, just, I like in Bad Batch how we're getting closer and closer to that. Omega already did the same exact thing by giving herself in and going to Tantus. And uh, it's only a matter of time before the Bad Batch makes their way back into the underworld and free all the souls or clones there um, that are stuck. Um yeah. So it's it's very interesting. Love me some uh, mythology symbolism in Star Wars. Um, but by the way, when they get to this planet, the establishing shots of like there's like a bridge establishing shot, stunning artwork. Oh, oh my god! Right? Yeah. <laughs> like it looks it looks oh stunning. God, it looks mapping this, like yeah. thinking of like this whole expansive location, and you know, and having to like model it oh man it looked straight up incredible straight beautiful um like the bridge shot is great the uh, even there's a, there's a scene of like uh one of the um turbo tanks just like going along the road i'm like man this looks really well done like the bad batch is easily the best looking star wars show to date and i just i can't wait to see other projects using this animation it's always so worthwhile mm -hmm. um so yeah, they basically Fee gets there a very in a very hilarious fashion. By the way, just cutting off the engine, cutting it back on right before they land. Uh, pretty smart, pretty uh, risky, but you know, happens all the time. Um, yeah. And throughout this, Rampart's just like jabbing with another alien who can't understand their language. They're kind of like they hate each other. Good comedic shit. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Crosshair, once they get to the turbo tank, they really quickly take over the turbo tank. They get their mission, they get there, and they ask Rampart, basically, uh, where is Tantus? Rampart doesn't say shit. He says, you gotta free me first. Where are they? Where are Where's they? my daughter? Uh, well, on two different wavelengths. <laughs> are we doing Dark Knight? I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dark Knight, Prisoners, uh, Peak watch the watch the IMAX discussion between Nolan and Villeneuve. It's a good good video. Yeah, great video. Uh, two pioneer directors, not pioneer, but just like two of the current um, big proponents of IMAX, along with uh, your boy James Cameron. Yeah, one um, of them being like, "Oh, I love what you've done." They're like, "Ah," another person's like, "I love what you've done." Ah, nah. like, 
<laughs> just just you say like masterminds. Yeah. <laughs> they they can't just say like how influential they both have been. Like uh, I don't know. They're all so humble. Why so humble? You'd be like, oh, when you made Interstellar, oh that shit. Oh man, but, but what you were able to do with doing this like ah oh, fucking side project. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um so yeah, Rampart. But I like a Rampart says, like, I'm not telling you guys shit until you free me. It's like, okay, cool. We're still gonna stun your ass anyways. And they stunned him instantly. <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm too gruesome in these desperate situations, Evan. I, I think we could have tortured the son of this man. Oh my god. <laughs> I think I could have I think I could have pinned down his hand and be like, I'm gonna blast it. Say something. No. <laughs> Boom. You got a lot ah! more parts. Yeah. You go Did finger you by finger. I'll just go for the whole hand. What do you want? You cut off my face. Where's my tongue? <laughs> the, well, the funny prisoners th- in Star Wars. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, it kind of works with uh Star Wars. Like, they're basically the father to Omega. It's so, like Where's my daughter, bitch? Like, come on. Uh, Literally. It's for for what? Funny. The fifth time she's been in, in in custody? In captivity, yeah. They, they suck. Uh, it's not a great track record for them. Every time Hunter's like, no, we can't let her do this. It's, it's dangerous <laughs> out there. And it's like, yeah, but we gotta. All right. Oh, fuck. She's captured. Not by so was, not at that moment. but Yeah. So this was just great. Uh, they make their way out. It was a great action sequence on the bridge. They they literally like ride a turbo tank out of the uh, out of the bridge, and then we get some good like um, last crusade. We're on the side of a cliff, kind of shit, with the turbo tanks yeah. and the tanks. It's really fun. Um, and then we make their kind way of, out. Kind of indie coded, Indiana Jones esque. Yeah, this was a big indie episode. I kind of liked that. Um, really fun. Um, and then, yeah, they make it was a clean save. They make their way off the planet, and now they wake up. Rampart is like, "Okay, your uh, your time's up here. So, uh, how did we get to Tantus?" And he's like, "Well, <laughs> funny story about that. <laughs> you're gonna laugh. Trust me, you're gonna laugh. <laughs> I don't I th- know. <laughs> I think he pulls. Yeah, he pulls the same shit that uh, like Fennec Shan when, when they ask like, "Hey, Fennec, can you help us?" They're like, "Sure." Uh, but also you can help me first. They help out Fennec, and Fennec's like, okay, thank you. Now I'll ask the person who actually Three to five knows, business days. Yeah, three to five business days, then we'll get back to you. They're like, fuck! And then finally, um, with uh, Rampart here, it's like, well, uh, I actually don't know because hardly anybody knows, but what was Emery's solution here? I think he says like he might have a way, he has to ask somebody or something like that, or he has to find a way. All right. Um, I think yeah, it was some sort of like more direct path. Um, mm. oh, I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, I kind of I didn't put that in my notes here, but e- either way, he's gonna ask somebody. They have they have a direct line, so it's only a matter of time. I wouldn't be surprised if like the first thing, the first part of this week's episode, um, they finally get some concrete information. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, back with Emery to close out the episode. Emery successfully tests Omega's blood, but Emery has like a sad demeanor now. Omega's back in her graces, not graces, but just o- Omega's back. And uh, having seen the point of no return, or having seen the identity crisis episode, you can really see a shift in Emery's demeanor. It's very interesting. Um, yeah. And Hemlock also explains again to Omega this time why her blood is so important. He once again says, M count levels always degrade in clones, but her blood is like a universal M count donor. When her blood is combined with clones, their levels do not decrease. Basically, once again, for the audience, telling us what her blood, why her blood is so important and her impact. Um, Omega then, after getting this information, is left with the other clones. He literally puts her mm. in the same, uh, not clones, sorry, with the other four sensitive kids. Um, and this is where I put my notes. Hemlock, you done fucked up. You done messed up, buddy. Um, you know who Omega, you know how Omega is with just everybody she comes in, into contact with. And, you know, a revolution is going to be coming. She's going to get along well with Jax, Eva, and the blue one, which I don't think we've got a name for yet. Um, yeah. she's, she's going to bond with them. I think this week's episode, uh, and by the way, I, I was going to share the episode title for the remaining episode once I find it here. 
Um, but uh, she's going to really bond with these clones. It's going to be very interesting seeing her work her magic with these clones. Or with these, sorry, with these kids. I keep saying clones. Because yeah. um, now... Specimens? Now she's... Uh, ugh. Now she's not only going to be saving the clone, she's going to be saving these kids yeah. as well. Before before Eva revealed her name, the subtitles did call her specimen, and I was like, that's awful. Yeah, that's not great. Um, so yeah, we have three episodes left with episode 17, or sorry, episode 13 this week, episode 14 next week, and episode 15 on May 1st, the series finale, which might be longer. That's what me and Nathan are hoping for. But episode 13... Uh, we don't have episode titles, actually. I just saw that. No title. But either way, I can assume that moving forward, we're going to get see, we're gonna see some work here between uh, Omega and the Force-sensitive children, some more chinks in the armor that is Emery's uh, wall that she has with these children. I think Emery's going to be more and more... Um, willing to help like i don't think she's just gonna wait until the finale to actually do something or whatever i think we're gonna see some more progress there and then on the bad batch side whoever rampart's contact is with uh they're gonna have to chart their way um i don't know i'm just spitballing here but i'm excited for the rest of the season three episodes left and uh only a matter of time before we raid tantus save the clones the children and the clones the bad batch themselves are going to inadvertently stop uh, Palpatine's necromancer project for the next 50 plus years until we get to the Rise of Skywalker. Whatever they do on Tantus, or, yeah, or at for least a long time. at least until like I think the Mando era because he was the, trying some shit there. Uh, yeah, now he's, yeah, he's trying again back in the Mando era, but they stop it for a long time, which is a miraculous series of events. I think they're only here just to save Omega. That's your initial prerogative. Um, mm. But whatever happens, puts a stop to part of Necromancer for for the foreseeable future. Again, until yeah, the Mando era. So it's beautiful that the clones who were initially manipulated and inadvertently led to the massacre of Jedi and Force sensitive across the galaxy, the clones are the one that end up stopping the future of the Empire with Project Necromancer. It, it's a great uh, twist of fate. Um, yeah. There, um, but we got to move on, um, and we got to watch some more. So, what's next for Star Wars animation? Well, last week they revealed a surprise, surprising announcement. Not Tales of the Jedi season two, um, but Tales of the Empire um, <gasps> shorts airing he on gagged. Disney Plus. On my birthday, and got busy. Oh, whoops! I got busy. Um, so this is gonna be fun. We're just gonna be reacting to this. Uh, yeah, I think we have some time. I, I, I might save some of our acolyte stuff for next week. Um, okay. Time today. Um, but I want to go over this and the Outlaws trailer before the end stream here. Um, oh, yeah, I will. I, I'm, I'm seeing that last Oh, sweet. Yeah, I'll, I'll hook that up. Or, did I? Maybe. I don't know your life. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> I don't uh, these streams. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, so this really blew me. I was so surprised. I was just in the middle of work, and I'm like, wait, Tales of the Empire? Hello, Barris? What? Um, so this is interesting. I didn't yeah, I didn't see it because I think the, I watched the initial tweet from the Star Wars account, and I didn't see exactly what it was, um, mm. what it was for. Because I think it was just like a quote for the caption, so I was just watching it blindly, and I was like, "What's this brand new Star Wars show following these people? Holy shit! Full season? <laughs> <It's> like, no. <laughs> no, just these shorts. Um, again, a collection of shorts, probably three episodes each. One covering yeah. um, Barris Offie, and one covering um, uh, Morgan Elsbeth. Thank you, Morgan Ellis Beth. So here we go. Tales of the Empire coming out May 4th, Star Wars Day. Why did you sneak Is it working for you? Yes. Okay. Thrawn talking to Elsbeth during the Clone Wars era. This is great. Yeah. Clone Wars style Thrawn. Oh my god. Beautiful animation. 
they, they perfected it. The destruction of Dathomir. Why? Offer accepted. <laughs> I love Thrawn. That voice. I'm here to present you with an opportunity. The fourth sister. Hey. Swimming are in that cell yet? Yeah. Cool. Two people who joined the Empire because of the rage of the past. The goat! Hey, it's, it's him. He's him. Is that his original voice actor? Yeah, it's uh, Jason Isaacs. Okay. You said the Empire would help to change things. Oh, so sad. Comes yeah. She comes back to her own Republic. home planet. Oh, yeah, he's in New Republic clothes. Yeah. Grievous! Grievous! Wow. You cannot stop what has begun. That's crazy. Ooh. This is very much a callback to uh, Star Wars Jedi uh, Holy Order. Oh, oh yeah. It is time you meet your new master. With the Inquisitorious. New master. Annie? Annie? Little Annie? All right. Zelda. Mm. Oh, man. Cool, man. I'm not going to be mad at seeing Vader. I know, right? I love that burn oh. away. It's, it's so good. They did that with Bad Batch, too, with Clone Wars. So this is coming out May 4th, uh, the same week of the Bad Batch finale. Um, Nathan and I, are, of course, have been watching the Bad Batch finale. Uh, you know, I'm watching it when, when soon as it drops for Bad Batch. But also, for these yeah. shorts, we're not going to have Hyperbase hype that weekend because it comes out May 4th, which is already a Saturday. So we'll be covering it the week afterwards. Um, covering the Bad Batch finale and the Tales of the Empire the week of May 8th. Um, this should so, yeah. be a this should be a good amount, like of like an hour and a half's worth of story to cover for uh, yeah. watch time for this, which would be great. Um it's funny with when I saw Grievous, because I remember I said this before on stream how when what starting the first episode of the Siege of Mandalore arc uh, in the finale of Clone Wars, uh, you see that quick establishing shot of Grievous on a ship because they were setting up Revenge of the Sith. And I was like, oh shit, his model looks so good. And then they, they didn't use it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah. And now here it is. I'm like, look, he looks so good. And they're just continuously establishing like how they, they build a character model that doesn't get used in a show, but then another show uses it. Like they did it with a fucking, uh, they did it with a uh, Kanan. Kanan's a child model. Um, and did they, did they kind of do that with um, Krennic, who didn't we see him in also in Siege of the Empire or whatever that was called? Uh, Siege of the Sith. Um, Siege of the Sith is my edit. <laughs> That's Siege of Mandalore. Siege of Mandalore. Uh, um, no, I, then, I don't think we saw him in Bad do. Bash, right? I think, yeah, we did see him in Bad Bash, but I don't think we actually did see him in that. We saw, know. we saw, what's his name? Um, Paul Bentley's character from Solo. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, okay. So, so I'm still like, when is he? <laughs> uh, he when he'll is be Bobby? in uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Um, yeah, no, actually, the, he'll be dead. I'm sure the same be, art style. He'll be dead by then. Um, yeah. But yeah, so let's go through this. This is very interesting. Uh, so, of course, if people are unfamiliar, like, what is going on here? Whoops. Uh, <laughs> what is going on here? What 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 is this? Years ago, that Elbeth is talking about. This is uh, the destruction of Mandalore, or sorry, not Mandalore, Dathomir from the Empire. People, people may ask, like, didn't they already do that in season five? Didn't Nathan and Evan already do a commentary of that episode when Grievous and uh, the clones, or the clones, Grievous and the droids attack and kill the mother? Uh, yes, this happened. Um, or but no, they they go in there and they kill off the uh, person who summoned all the zombies. But they come again um, in the in the comic. Uh, what was it called? The Dark Horse um, comic. Yeah, the Dark Horse comic, Son of Dathomir, which was the Maul comic. What happened to Maul after getting his ass kicked by Palpatine? He retreats back to Dathomir. So 
Sidious sends Grievous once again to Dathomir to wipe him out completely. And this is what happens. Wipe out the witches, wipe out everything in Dathomir. And this is where also where they kill off, kill off the mother this time. Um, right. Mother Towson. And this is what was referenced along with, of course, the clones episode that we saw in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order when we meet um, the best girl ever. Uh, I'm blanking on her name. It's Cow and... Uh, uh, Marin. Marin, thank you. Marin, who is so angry because of this. Morgan and uh, Marin are both scarred by this event um, with the clones coming in. Or I keep saying clones. The, the droids coming in and wiping them out. Her people yeah. destroyed. And, you know, this is why I love Star Wars, man. Like, we see Marin have this awful past, but then she meets Cal, mm. and she's able to change her ways. All it takes is one person. Um, but for Morgan, she didn't have Cal. She had Thrawn come in, and I think she puts her trust mm. and her faith in Thrawn, and that can easily turn somebody's anger into a different outlet here. And uh, what makes this so interesting, and, and I watched Star Wars Explains uh, – description of this or you know his theories and everything i completely yeah. agree with this and in, in, in tales of the jedi we got um we had dooku and then we have ahsoka two people who left the jedi order went down different paths dooku yeah. went down a darker path of course ahsoka left the order of her own free will as well but went down a brighter path she continued helping people even though she was out of the jedi order um i yeah. think we're going to see two things here where, yes, Tales of the Empire, we see Morgan Elsbeth and Bears Offy join the Empire. That's their similar path. They both join the Empire. But yeah. what makes them go down different paths? Because we're not going to watch six episodes, three shorts each, about two people who join the Empire. Oh, they're bad. The end. No. Morgan's going to go down a darker path. We know her end. She sticks with Thrawn. We see her in Ahsoka. She meets her inevitable end. To Ahsoka in Thrawn. She dies. Um, Barris, though, I think is going to go down a uh, redemption. That's my theory. Uh, I think she goes down a path of, yeah, I'm going to join the Inquisitorious. I'm going to, you know, possibly kill another Inquisitor in training. Uh, but then yeah. we see her, we see Barris, um, where we see it. Um, one final test. Uh, Barris maybe going against, going with the fourth sister here to fight some Jedi. Um, and then uh, something happens. I can see Barris turning her way. And then this is Barris running towards, Barris Offie running towards the Jedi and the fourth sister. I think Barris, you know, makes a decision that could result in her death, but she makes a good choice here. Uh, I'm not one for sacrifice, but I can see her sacrificing her life or just like saving somebody, saving the Jedi. I don't know. but And then probably mm -hmm. getting killed by Vader or getting killed by another Inquisitor um, yeah. as punishment. I just, I really do think that Barris is going to end her shorts, her story here in a good light. Because um, mm -hmm. there's a reason she joined the Jedi. And there's a reason she left the Jedi in the sense that like she became disillusioned with yeah. the Jedi's actions, which she wasn't really wrong. The Jedi were going down a dark path during the Clone Wars. Um, everything she said was right, but she just went about it in horrible means um, by framing Ahsoka and killing other innocent people. Um, so I think she's going to make her choice and become good after this. That's just my uh, thoughts there. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's some cool shots here again with the Jedi and Barriss and the fourth sister. Um, I don't think we know the Four Sisters' demise, so I think we might get it done here. Um, no, I think she was in Kenobi, I think. She might have been in Kenobi. Okay. So maybe she survived. Um, so yeah, Barris might, Barris might kill Homeboy on the right here. Can you see my mouse on mm -hmm. screen? I do. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, this again just reminded me of Jedi Fallen Order, as I said during the commentary there. Uh, just the Inquisitorious. It's like this is similar to the area where we fought uh, Trilla, my girl Trilla. Rest in peace. Mm. 
um, so hot. I think so, anyway. I think I saw somebody point out that this specific species has only appeared in the games. I think I think in Fallen Order games. Which one? Uh, the one Barris is fighting. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Um, your new master. It's just very funny. Uh, you know, all the memes about like, hey, Anakin, are you still mad at me? <laughs> uh, yeah, fucking. And of course, we so see, well last time. And of course, we see uh, two of the ones on the right. We see Marok, who we saw yeah. from Ahsoka. Marok from Ahsoka. And then homeboy, mm -hmm. I forget his name, from the shorts, also killed by yeah, Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown, exactly. Um, was that Clancy? I hope he's back. It was Clancy. Yeah. Uh, um, Clancy's every fucking he was just called God damn. He is, and I'm glad he is because he's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Holy shit. I, was, um, I wanted to have more live action roles too because he's also great there. He was phenomenal in uh, John Wick. Like, he didn't have a lot yeah. to do, but he just, he was the adjudicator and he did his job perfectly. I don't know how I got that out of my ass, but that's his. That's Apparently, his he's. Um, Apparently he's uh, big in the Highlander franchise, which I I want to dive into. Oh, well, hopefully he's in the Highlander reboot with Henry Cavill. That'd be cool. Yeah, and Chad Stahelski. There's already Chad connections Stahelski. done there. Is Chad the one doing the uh, Ghost of Tsushima one too? Yeah, waiting on that. Chad, Chad, you're too busy, my brother. Take a break. Take a break. <laughs> too Chad. Chad. Um, you're too Chad. Chad. So yeah, let's go through this some more. Uh, we see her fighting Grievous. Is that her fighting Grievous? Somebody said it's somebody else, but uh, it looks uh, like it's Morgan. I, yeah, I think it's Morgan fighting Grievous. It looks like or Morgan. Maybe, yeah. She uses the power that it she is. used. I think somebody said that's somebody else, but I think that's Morgan. That's her. She, that... she rocked up with those weapons, too, in an establishing shot. Okay. So yeah, she's using the this power could... that, she, that we saw at the end of Ahsoka, right? That same power. Yeah. This could be just like this could be your first episode, honestly, at the destruction of Daphne. I agree. I think this is the first episode. It's like when we see her again with Thrawn. It could end with her and Thrawn mm -hmm. having that talk. Um, and then what's so dark about this is like uh, she is so wounded by what the Empire did to her homeworld that she reflects that by going to another area that she called home um, and just completely subjugating them. She's doing the same thing to somebody else that the Empire did to her. Um, just that that reflection, that parallel is just so harmful, so sad. Um, but that's how we join the Empire. Oh, and it's going to be cool seeing Grievous again. Who voices Grievous yeah. again? What's his name? Um, uh, Matthew Johnson. Wood. He's the, Matthew Matthew Wood, Wood. Yeah. He's, the, he's the sound engineer on since the prequels. Yeah, he's great. So yeah, the droids coming in. Barris, Barris. Okay, let me go back. Some other things here. I, I just like this Thrawn animation. Seeing Thrawn pre uh, um, Rebels, pre Rebels in this Clone Wars uh, style. Is, is this the first time we've seen him in the Clone Wars animation? Yeah, he doesn't have his like head bumps. <laughs> <laughs> it just it looks very interesting. Again, I never got into the Thrawn novels, but he will always be an interesting mm -hmm. character. I never really loved the character. But you know he's always interesting. Has a great presence on screen. Um, yeah. Hard to deny. Uh, red troopers, of course. These red troopers are the ones that are on station on Coruscant and work in mm -hmm. the uh, with the Inquisitors very closely. Um, so yeah, I think Barris is just gonna. It's gonna be a parallel of seeing her like join an order, like she joined the clone troopers, or sorry, like she joined the Jedi Order, and then she joined mm -hmm. the uh, Empire. And uh, what's going to be different here? Somebody says, like, why are these clone troopers all gray? Like, what makes these clo these clone troopers different? Um, I'm not sure. It could just be clone troopers because they work so closely with the Inquisitors or something. You mean my uh, jet trooper from Star Wars Battlefront 2? Exactly. That same one. <laughs> that same exact one. Um, so, yeah. Morgan going about her path. Hey, this, this all looks very first episode to me. Yeah. And then second episode could be, or this could be like the very last end of the third episode. Like she becomes what the yeah. Empire made her. Yeah, uh, just very That's sad. 
Um, sad, yes. But sad and cool and badass and awful and cool everything. and thematically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Grand Inquisitor is just really cool seeing his presence on screen again. Very great character in season one of Rebels. I think underrated, arguably. Um, he looks pretty damn close to his Rebels model. Uh, he honestly. really does. Yeah. Um, seeing all those like dead Jedi, you have to think like, does Barris know who these who these lightsabers belong to? That would that would add an extra layer of uh, darkness to the dark side. Good old Jason Isaacs, great shit. Somebody somebody made a cool um point out that what if what if the Grand Inquisitor here was one of the Temple Guards that was uh, escorting her in the last Clone Wars episode she was in? Yep, he could remember. He could remember her for sure. The blood. Blood. And again, lastly, this is uh, Morgan's world that we saw in the first episode that we saw her in, in Mando Season 2, Episode mm -hmm. 5, I want to say. Um, yeah, 4 or 5. Could be 4 six. or 5. I think it's five. Four is the four was the um, first intro of um, uh, the girl with the red hair. Fuck, fuck. fuck. Oh, Bogatan. Bogatan, yeah. Four was Bogatan. The Price of Last Hours episode. Three was. I swear, I swear I'm gonna was, fact check it. Three was the Peyton Reed one, right? The the cave episode. Two was. That was two. That was two. You're like off by one on all. <laughs> well, off by one. I swear to God, it's episode I'm, I'm five. This is. Check for me. This is episode five. I'm, I'm checking. I'm checking. So, episode one was, of course, was the uh, Tatooine brawl. Uh, okay. The IMAX episode, I call it. Exactly. I'm on ethic ratio. Episode two was the. Uh, I guess you're right. I guess two was Peyton Reed. Um, what was three? Oh, three. No. Uh, three was. Yeah, uh, three was. Well, I'm going to it right now, but I'm remembering episode three was uh, Bryce Bryce's episode with a uh, frog lady and uh, frog lady. Okay, and then so maybe that was Bogotan. Yeah, let me uh, pull it up. I'm Disney Plus fucking load. I don't know what. I, I could, wish it would like I at least hover. The, I, no, I, I I want the satisfaction. <laughs> I'm already on the Bad Batch page on my phone. I can look it up. I, I'm I'm right here right now. I'm here. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got a lot. Anyway, <laughs> how you doing? Do I'm doing fantastic. It's just normal. <laughs> um. Um. So yeah, that's that's about it. I'll set up the uh, Outlaws trailer. So again, I'm just very excited. I just want to reinforce again that I think Bear is going to go down a dark, but then good path, and Morgan's going to retain her dark path and become the thing she hates. Um, most excited to see would be Grand Inquisitor again. And uh, Barris's overall journey. This is we've been waiting to see Barris's journey for 10 plus years now. The finale of the Clone Wars was in 2014 or maybe longer. Uh, I forget when the finale of the Clone Wars was, but um, yeah. was it like 2012, 2013, 2014? Um, uh, was the finale of the Clone Wars maybe 2013 because Rebels was 2014. Um, so we, we've been wondering, like, where oh. is Barris Coffee? Um, so yeah. Okay, so um, Morgan's episode was episode five of season two. So that was right. So what's episode four? Episode four was the siege. That was Carl Weathers' episode he directed. Oh, the, the boring episode. Oh no, well, it's not gotta be like that. Yeah, but thank you, Carl, for directing it. He was he was phenomenal. Um, in that episode, that was a fun episode for him at least. Um. Yeah. I keep forgetting he's dead. Was the broken How is he gone? How is he gone? It doesn't feel real. That is awful. It doesn't feel real. Um, it never does. <sighs> anyways, um, captured in engine, but not all images appeared in the game. Um, are you with me? Do you see it? Yep. Cool. Um, or oh, you're my enemy. Oh, yeah, man. Okay. So yeah, we'll watch this, then we'll head out. I'm gonna have time for acolyte. But I am compiling all the Acolyte information. Uh, so I think next week we'll only have two episodes to go over this week. And then next week's episode, 
So then a lot less stuff to go over. But yeah, Acolyte, getting some more images, some more information about each of the characters. We'll probably get some more information in the next two weeks so we can get even more stuff in our next episode. Uh, but yeah, so this is, again, Star Wars Outlaw story trailer. The first official teaser trailer was revealed last year at Summer Games Fest, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Summer Games Fest, which is kind of like the new you know, E3, if you're a gamer. Uh, E3 is dead, but Jeff... Yeah, is it? Was, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's been dead. Um, like, officially, so, like, the studios pulled out, like, Sony and then pulled out um what's his name jeff keely yeah jeff keely uh summer games fest is premiering on june 7th um i thought honestly the next part we'll get for outlaws would be on june but we got it here early that's great that's a great sign um speaking of summer game fest i'm just hoping that we get some uh kingdom hearts 4 information at summer game fest i need it badly uh, I, I was re-watching that teaser and i was like how the fuck did they upgrade Sora's face so much? <laughs> it's it's stunning. I'm like, oh my god, the the new the, it's a new un engine, un the Unreal Engine. Um, and I realism always takes me back because I'm just like, oh shit, it's look that's a real face, but it's anime. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's the Final Fantasy uh, faces. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, this Star Wars Outlaws. I'm very excited for this game. Before we start, like. Um, I, I, I'll reveal it afterwards. I think they, they talk about the gaming, the mm -hmm. pricing and stuff afterwards, which has been the subject of a lot of controversy. Um, uh, the, the decent, right? Yeah, Ubisoft. It's a, it's a decent kind of controversy. I'm not, we're not going to talk about the uh, horrible people online who are judging the character in that controversy because those people yeah. just hate women and idiots. Um, yeah. But uh, here we go. Star Wars Outlaws. I'm personally excited for this game and the possibilities of the gameplay. So here we go. I'm an idiot, guys. Um, <laughs> we're still on. Ha! We're still on. I was like, I was like, taking a minute. <laughs> yeah, this is a very interesting trailer. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> here we go. It, it gets like the the fucking uh, Furiosa trailer text, like oh, yeah. forty years ago, the fall. Of the war. By the way, I saw the Furiosa trailer again on the big screen in front of a uh, Civil War, and I'm like, mm. oh my god, that uh, that theme that they have for Furiosa, phenomenal. Um, was it the teaser or was it the new trailer? It's the new trailer. It's like the uh, oh, um, I forget the jingle now, but it's it's so catchy and it's so good. Like I boom, hope... boom, put it on, put it on, boom. Yes, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, lost the Furiosa trailer, but here we go. Star Wars Outlaws. Some of the most this is Canto Bite, by the way. Canto Bite. Is it? Oh, cool. It looks like it, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, they have those ships on Canto by ear. I think you're right. It looks like it. Uh, we'll see. Represent some of the most powerful criminal organizations in the galaxy. Game of Thrones ass looking Pike. motherfucker. Crimson Dawn. Pikes, Crimson Dawn, Huts. This this is a new organization which was teased in the comics. The and was it during War of the Bounty Hunters? Correct. Distracted by yeah. rebellion that won't quit. It's an opportunity to make millions. Remember, this takes place between episodes five and six. That's fun. The underworld's favorite new scout. We need it last. What do you want? Zarek Vetch. Zarek. Love that name. Rich and nice. So that's the new, so new probably organization. Not Zarek Vetch. Probably not going to run into any Versio. No. This fortune buy your freedom. This job. It's a death wish. There's Han. Oh, wow. Where's Han? <laughs> Reputation is a big factor in the game. It can go up and down depending on your actions. That's cool. <laughs> nice try. I've heard that before. For about as long as I can remember, it's just been me and Nick. Nyx is, of course, the alien creature here. Doing what nice. we have to to survive. This job is my one shot at freedom. Open world gameplay, really cool. But if we're gonna pull this nice. off, Uncharted vibes. Right mm. And the right ship. 
she's stealing a ship, but she can't get the seating right. Fantastic. <laughs> I love the energy. We can't we can't upgrade and edit the ship as well. Ooh. She's more connected than you let on, Suiro. Ooh. Best is mixed up in something bigger. Ex-girlfriend? <laughs> Kira's daughter. Is dangerous <laughs> Everyone is fighting for their piece of the galaxy. Is she in the castle run? <laughs> Might be. A Kessel run. Oh God! Oh, what Sarlacc. is that? Wait, wait, wait! Hold up! What was that? <laughs> that was the, that was the Sarlacc. Was that a crate dragon too? I think so. I mean, if we're visiting Jabba, we must be on Tatooine. Uh, oh, gross! Star Wars Eclipse. We're not. We're watching that. I'm oh, sad. I was excited because they made. I know. Then you like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you yeah you played uh Detroit Go Human, whatever that's called. Detroit Become Human. Detroit Become Human. Uh, I God, that was the. I think that's the most I've ever been emotionally manipulated by a game, Evan. Because it really is every choice true. does actually matter. There's like 62 different endings you can unlock, man. That's too much uh, for me. I'm like, just give me. It got the to the point where I had to, I had to decide the future of people in a revolution. I did. I had to put my controller down for like an hour because I was like, I don't know what to pick. That's crazy. I, I felt morally um, obligated to make the right decision. So yeah, not much to glean from this trailer. I mean, there's a lot, but like, uh, you know. So we see the Underworld new organization coming to say like, hey, we can do this, whatever. Uh, I thought he was initially like uh, basically taking over, like a hostile takeover. And that's kind of what it is. Mm -hmm. But he's trying to put his like, uh, it's a manipulation tactic that the developer said. He's like, he's trying, they're trying to um put the other um syndicates under his control or like uh you know manipulate them but of course this is during the war of the bounty hunters there's a lot of tension and struggles between the syndicates so they're all going to be out for their own agendas uh, mm -hmm. um so that's gonna be interesting so in the height of the empire again between five and six cast does something to betray the main guy here um and this guy says he can help her get out of that, basically by stealing from uh, Zarek Besh, stealing from this new organization called, called Zarek Besh. Steal from them, and you can... Uh, th there we go, right? You cross their boss, Slero, and now he wants you gone. He's the reason that your bounty is so large and that you're on the run that you become, hence, an outlaw for the entire game. Um, mm. And then this person is... Uh, this uh, bounty hunter right here... Is going to be working for him out to get you. Have you played Uncharted Four yet, Nathan? No, I, I haven't. No, uh, did I finish three? I don't remember. She reminds me of Nadine from Uncharted Four. No spoilers, but you know she was working with the baddie, but she wasn't fully bad. Um, but she was a baddie. Um, <laughs> wow. If you catch my drift, um, is, but yeah, is Sam in Uncharted Three? Four. He's in four. Okay, so maybe you know I have finished three. Three is the one with um, Tao Bit, the older lady who wants the sands, um, the temple. Is that what the fucking like the yeah, the like the city of eternal youth and shit? Yes, exactly. Okay, I be I be in track. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I like this. This is like small bits of gameplay, sneaking mechanics, and yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of different worlds, different uh, environments. I remember them talking about that in the first teaser trailer. How there's like, and of course, the first teaser trailer had all that gameplay footage as well. This is more of a story. Um, usually, it's story then gameplay, but this was a gameplay to story. So one of the things that people are upset about is that the job of mission in uh, there's like an exclusive job of mission that's only exclusive to like the season pass. So there's a standard yeah. edition of the game, which is seventy sixty nine ninety nine seventy bucks. For the standard edition, then there is then there is a gold or I think it's ultimate edition, then gold or gold then ultimate, whichever one. Um, if you pre-order the gold edition or you get the gold edition, then you get a three-day pass or three-day early play, um, and you get the exclusive Kessel Run DLC, which makes you get this Jabba the Hut mission. Something yeah. um, there's a Jabba mission. If you do the gold 
or the Ultimate Edition. It's not available if you get the regular Standard Edition. The Gold Edition is like 100 bucks because it includes the Season Pass, so it's an additional 30 bucks. And then the Ultimate Edition, the big one, I, again, I could be getting those mixed match, but the Ultimate Edition or Gold Edition, the bigger one, is then 120 bucks. You can get the DLC, the base game, and some extra stuff like a like an art book or whatever. So there's a lot of different yeah. uh, pay things there. Um, so again, you're gonna be invading the Empire, other syndicates, and just recently they said like uh, Kira from Crimson Dawn from Solo, uh, she will be in the game, not voiced by Amelia Clark, but she is in the game. Um, mm. Certain actions we didn't see much from Destroyed. Um, but he is like a sidekick for you, which is cool. Just a awesome KX droid in a trench coat. Just very awesome. He's very prominent in the first yeah. teaser trailer. Um, yeah. Of course. Um, so yeah, they said like reputation is very big. If you steal from the Pikes, you can go back to the Pikes and say, here's your belongings, here's your stuff, here's the mission complete. Or you can do a mission for the Pikes and then turn in, turn it in to Kira from Crimson Dawn. So you can choose I was to work with here. I was seeing all over the timeline. There is a zero percent success rate for the pikes in this choice. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's gonna be wanting to work for Crimson Dawn. Crimson Dawn are great, like you know, Crimson Dawn does some bad things. Given War of the Bounty Hunt, they do some like killing of like killing and kidnapping stuff like that. But like eventually, Crimson Dawn still wants to help take out the Empire. So I'll be working for them. Um, whoever's against Sidious Invader, I'm working for them. And then again, you can customize this ship right there. Um, you can like help them out. And then yeah, he he assigns her to go look for uh, K K Vess. Um, so this is gonna be the person that's gonna be on us for most of the game. And then apparently she has a history with K by saying she's more connected than you let on. So I wonder what their past is like. Um, so yeah. Vest is mixed up in something bigger. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be fun. It's a fun I remember that open shot. World game. Yeah, they just had that shot of the Star Destroyer in space, and I remember it on Twitter because like they didn't have the shield generators at the top, so everyone was like, "Where are the balls?" They needed the <laughs> Star Destroyer. I was like, oh shit! That was funny. So yeah, I'm excited to see more gameplay. Was that a, was that a crate dragon? That was a great dragon. It looks like they're running around Jabba's palace with those uh, Bomar monks. So yeah, the Kessel Run bonus pack gives you, I guess, some ship and some biker cosmetics. Um, and then again, on top of that, there's a gold or there's, there's a season pass. Um, Evan will be obtaining all of this stuff. for us to stream. <laughs> Not. Yeah, I, I would love to stream this with you guys. Uh, Nathan, and I have streamed uh, Spider Man in the past, Jedi Survivor in the past. Um, were those the only two games you did, Survivor and Spider-Man? What else have we done? Oh, Alien. Um, we got hat we got little ways in Alien. We don't know how much is actually truly left of that game. I think there's like one chapter left. We got to do it. We didn't. I didn't have time over spring break, but like we we got to finish Alien Isolation. Yeah, like there, there's got to be one left, and we're gonna be on like five in. And we're gonna be like, fuck, which way on the map? Like, I know it's lost. crazy. We keep getting lost, but yeah, and we got to be dressing now. So like, there's no way we have like a, a success rate as much as before. You know, we'll see. But yeah, that's it for tonight. Um, it's getting late. Um, so yeah, I'm going for Outlaws. Coming out August, I think. It was on the trailer. I don't know. I forget the date. August something. August 30th. Yeah. Um, so right when school starts again. Great. Not great. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, Star Wars Outlaws looks great. Coming out in August. Uh, oh, crap. Um, how much, what time is it? 154. Uh, I'll reveal it next time. But there were some two <laughs> awesome High Republic covers for Tales oh. of uh not Tales, what was it called? It was um Tears of the Nameless. And Ooh, yeah, that there, was one. There was another one. Let me see here. It's in my uh gallery that I took. Yeah. Beware the Nameless, which comes out August 27th, and then Tears. Of the nameless, what comes out September twenty fourth, two months apart, um, and then they are again continuing phase three, which is a final phase of the High Republic. Uh, this summer, we have we have 
temptation of the force. And then it will continue again. It'll take a break starting in June and they'll come back in August and September. Cool. So High Republic is in full swing. I'm very excited for that. Um, again, I'll go over that in some more, along with some Acolyte stuff in our next episode. Uh, we'll, we'll cover episode 13. Or we'll cover episodes. Uh, we'll cover episodes 13 and 14, yeah, of Bad Batch. And we'll give our theories for the final episode in two weeks. Or in four oh. weeks now. Final episodes in four weeks, but our next Hyper Space Hype is in two weeks. Anyways. Um, find me on Twitter at Harris Harris EV. Now I'm about to go watch one anime episode, Spice and the Wolf. Uh, very fun. I've been catching up on a lot of spring anime. Spring anime was initially kind of like, oh, this is going to be boring, but some interesting stuff even before My Hero comes back May 6th, the first week in May. Uh, and then Demon Slayer, uh, the Hashira training arc comes out the week after that, May 12th. So that's going to be exciting. Um, so yeah, find me on Twitter, Harris Harris, Evie and I, talking about all things anime, TV. It was National Anime Day today. Um, oh. So, you know, representing your favorite anime. Um, it's always fun. Um, go watch Haikyuu. Go watch Attack on Titan. Go watch 86. Go watch Hunter x Hunter. Naruto. One Piece. It's never too late to start for any of these anime. Anyways, Nathan, where can they find you? Go watch Rosary Vampire if you want. You know, anything. Exactly. Whatever's your bag. Whatever's your seen that? Tea. Never, never, <laughs> never, ever. I'm good. I have. It. It's very, just like, it's very indulgent, but also there's cool lore. <laughs> anyway. Oh, take your word for it. You only got two seasons and didn't finish the manga, which is apparently a lot more serious. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this, um, you can follow me as well at underscore Time Blazer. I'm making a show called Time Blazer with co star and creative consultant Evan Harris. <laughs> <gasps> Playing Ben, yep. yep. Uh, and that being said, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like button, subscribe, and already ring the bell. And that being said, I hope you have a great day. May the force be with you always.